This video is brought to you by the 3 Minute Board Game Patrons. Keep us independent by supporting us on Patreon. Kia ora koutou, and welcome to Portrayal at House on the Hill, 3rd edition, in about 3 minutes. Review copy used. It has no solo mode, it's a game for 3-6 to six players, playing time is medium, and it's a reasonably simple game. You are exploring a haunted house. Everything starts off normal, but you begin finding rooms of sinister purposes and seeing strange omens. Then, suddenly, the haunt begins. Once the haunt is triggered, you will have a second setup phase as the full scenario rules are revealed. Each scenario will have a different win condition, but in general, dropping to zero health will be bad for you. Tile placement. As you explore the house, you will place new room tiles. Card management. There are multiple different types of cards to manage. Dice. This game uses dice with values 0, 1, and 2. Player turn. There are six playable characters and each is double-sided. Pick the one you want to play, take their dial, and set their trackers to mark the green numbers for each stat. Then choose one of the scenario starter cards. Set up the starter Starting tiles of all players at the entrance, and the upper floor landing to one side. On your turn you can move your character speed, but you stop your movement if you move through a doorway to an unexplored part of the house. Check the tile stack. We are on the ground floor, and this tile says upper or basement, so we bury that tile to the bottom of the stack. The next one says upper or ground. We are on the ground floor, so we flip it over and place it. This tile has an event card symbol on it, so we draw an event card and resolve it. It's asking us to make a might roll, so we grab our character and check their might score and roll that many dice. We then check the event card for the rolled outcome. The next player moves into the guest quarters and then reveals a new tile. This tile has an item marker on it. Take that card to your hand. You can now use it at any time. The next player moves down the hallway to the staircase and goes to the upper landing because those two tiles are connected. They move off into a room in the upper section. This room has the omen marker, so we draw an omen card. We keep a hold of the omen card. Also note that this card is asking us to make a haunt roll. A haunt roll uses one die for every omen card that has been revealed so far in the game. If you ever roll five or more on this roll, the haunt begins. And when it does, flip over the scenario card and cross-reference it with the last omen drawn. This tells you who is the traitor and what page in each of the books the trader and other survivors should turn to. Each horde is different and may require special tokens or have weird ways to win it. Some are also free-for-alls with no traitor player. It's very hard to understate just how much the haunt will change the game. You may trade items with other players in the same room as you, and in many haunts you'll be able to attack other players. Roll your might score and dice and compare scores, with the loser taking the margin of the loss and damage to their stats. A final note, the basement starts off inaccessible and can only be accessed through rooms like the laundry shop. But once you are in the basement, you may explore freely. Why would you like this game? The first time I played Betrayal at House on the Hill 1st Edition was nearly 20 years ago, and a group was shrunk down and had to escape a haunted house using a model plane while the house cats hunted us. It was a memorable gaming experience, but one you won't have here, as 3rd Edition contains entirely new haunts, which I find really cool, as the game takes the original core and not only tightens the rules up, but gives you completely new content. And there's a heap of events and items, all of which draw on classic horror tropes. There's also a couple of expansions for the game out already, including this Christmas themed one. But ultimately, this is a game you play for the chaos and silliness it brings. And it's one I mostly recommend for groups who can embrace that silly factor. The best thing about this game is the different haunts. You never know what to expect. However, I've said it for nearly 20 years. The first half of the game is largely meaningless and the real game kicks off when the haunt does. So in many ways, you should consider it a short game with one heck of a lot of cooperative setup. For a different take on haunted houses, try Mansions of Madness. And for the fantasy version, try Betrayal at Boulder's Gate. Betrayal at House on the Hill. It's a game of one halves. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the notification button, like, share, and subscribe to the channel.